Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erin and I do mostly budgeting videos like the one you're about to see here. and you love budgeting videos uh, like savings goals and paycheck to paycheck videos and variable expenses and cash stuffing, uh, this may be a channel that you would enjoy, so please consider subscribing. Um, right here, I have my tool notebook cover on my big happy planner. This is where I keep all of my budgeting printouts and also my yearly calendar that I've been using most recently, more so than before. I'm using it for my budget. So I have my two um, sinking fund sheets here. One is old that I didn't end up using. And this one was from March, but I scratched that out and replaced it with April. Um, I need to do some reprinting and some redesigns so I can update everything and things make more sense and look nicer and write these things nicer. I have been sick for, um, probably a good week now and um, I'm still at home and so I'm trying to uh, make a list of things that I can get done from my computer, you know, have a chance to not only do some work but also um, address some things that I've been meaning to clean up like this. So this is my sinking fund printout that I did and just zooming in a bit you can see my categories over here I have renovations for our home my mom's flooring and if you need more explanation um, and want to check out some previous videos of mine I explain what all these mean this is a surprise gift for her uh, Black Friday slash Christmas gifts holiday shopping um, that's what this fund will cover or is going to cover um, my main sinking fund quarterly mortgage um, and that is an extra bro extra principal payments. Um, so I have lots of videos talking to you guys about what my early mortgage payoff plan is. And I use Dave Ramsey's early mortgage payoff calculator to figure all that out. So if you're interested, I have a whole video on that. And also um, our furniture, we're going to be replacing a few um, additional pieces. I showed you guys, I'm um, really a, I don't know, I, I a crazy splice together vlog yesterday. I didn't have the energy to come on here and update with numbers or even think about that. But <clears throat> I did show you guys our Facebook Marketplace dining room furniture find and I couldn't be happier with it. We did used to have dining room furniture, then we sold it and it was just not meeting our needs. It was from when we first got married and then I wasn't gonna use any dining room furniture and then we realized um, over the course of the past few years that we do need it, especially when we have family over and get togethers. So we found this steel and I put that clip in there so you guys could see what we got and how much we paid for it. So I've got my calculator here. We're adding a new fund today and that fund is escrow. So recently you guys know that I've been doing some changes and um, making some plans for or early mortgage payoff. And while I was doing that, while I was just kind of thinking through everything, crunching all the numbers and um, doing everything every way imaginable to figure out the earliest way we could pay off our mortgage, um, I also decided during that process that I wanted to keep our escrow for <clears throat> our property taxes now separate. And we've always had our taxes rolled in to our mortgage payment. We used to even have our homeowner's insurance rolled into that until we realized we were paying way too much for homeowner's insurance. This was many years ago. And it, it just became more cumbersome to go through the bank to make those changes when we wanted to switch insurance companies. And it just became a whole process. So we took out our homeowner's insurance a long time ago. And we have been keeping it that way ever since. And I'm not sure why we didn't remove our escrow, except the fact that at one point, we just didn't have enough equity in our home. And you do have to have a certain amount of equity based on what you owe versus what your house is worth for the bank to decide, yes, it is okay for you to separate your escrow. Um, you're no longer as high of a risk um, to them. Uh, they like you to keep the property taxes in there um, just in fear of, if you were to default on your taxes, then of course your county would come after the house and then that would 
potentially be a loss for the bank. Um, so that's why they want you to keep your escrow combined with your mortgage payment um, because they like to have control over that. But I also like to have control. <laughs> so I decided to request that our escrow be separated. I had to go through an approval process and they did approve it. And what they did was send me the refund for what was in there now. So to cover our property taxes, we need about $3,400 a year. Um, I know it's not really high. Our property taxes are not high where we live. We live in a regular, um, I would say like middle end suburb. And um, there are some high value houses where we live, uh, but they're also more average value houses. So I would say, you know, average house here is between two and 300,000. Um, and for some of you who live in California, that could equate to like 900,000. I don't know how you guys do it in some of the states that are more expensive, how you guys make rent or your mortgage payments. It is so beyond the scope of my comprehension. It's crazy. But what we get here is very comparable to what people get in other places for much more money. Um, I do live in Ohio, in case that helps you put things into perspective. Um, and it's just different. So, um, but it's probably more expensive than other places. You know, everything is subjective, whatever you're comparing to. Nothing is truly apples to apples. Um, so they gave me a refund in the escrow. So I'm going to count that with you guys. So we have 51, 52, 53, 54. Oops, nope, I had two there. Let's do it again. All right, let's pan out a bit too. So 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 50, 1,000, 50, 1,100, 50, 1,200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1,300, 13, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So $1,324. And there was some change in there too. So my husband was kind enough to go to the bank and get this cash for me um, because I'm going to put it in our other bank. So, um, $1,324 and of that, I'm going to put $1,300 in this new escrow fund. And that is on 4-6. I don't even know what the date is. 22. Um, so I need to have about $1,700 per half. Um, and it might be a little bit more, but I'll just handle that when it comes time to pay it. Um, my bank required that the escrow payment be made by July of every year and then again in February, I think. Uh, but when I talked to the county, they said, because I wanted to make sure all my ducks were in a row. When I talked to the county, they said, no, that's when the banks make the payment. Your payment is truly not due until August and March, I believe. I don't know. They're going to send me a letter. So I have everything in writing and I know what's going on, um, you know, because this is all new for me. Uh, I'm a middle-aged person who's been working my whole life and we've owned our home for a long time. But however, I, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still learning as I go. So we have $1,300 toward probably what's going to turn out to be a $1,700 bill for the half. So I'm going to put this in an envelope and this is going to go with my sinking funds uh, because as I get paid, um, you know, bi-weekly, monthly, however, um, however, whatever paychecks we decide to take the money out of, I need to make sure that I have another $400 in here before July. Um, I want to make sure that I have it all ready to go. And if possible, I'll make it a little bit early. Better be safe than sorry. I don't know. I'm a uh, pretty uh, obsessive about due dates too. I don't know. It's just like another thing about me. So here is my escrow, brand new fund. Um, I knew this was coming. I just wasn't sure when I was going to have the money. So I'm really happy that it came through. I'm going to put this way in the back because oh, this thing. All right. Somebody had mentioned that you can get fake bills in replacement of like your actual money. So when you do your videos, I guess you have like placeholders or kind of like, um, you know, stand-in bills so you don't have all the money on hand. Um, I think that would get confusing for me. I think it's a great idea 
you know, but for me, I think part of the, part of the reason why cash operating, um, cash sinking funds, cash variable expenses works for me is because the cash actually passes through my hand. There are two different ways to do videos, I guess. One is electronic and one is cash um, oriented or cash based, cash focused. If I had enough discipline for like my sinking funds or if it just worked for my brain, I would do everything electronically again. Um, that's always been my preference. I do put cash aside for our variable expenses um, and I do that just to keep myself budgeted. However, um, I could do the same thing and I used to use Capital One because they allowed you to do use all kinds of savings accounts. You could open, I think, 20 under one checking account. And that worked for me very well during the pandemic because I wasn't going out and I wasn't dealing in cash transactions. But after that, I just kind of got back into the habit. And I think that it is like just mentally, I think that seeing the cash and being able to count it and know that I have it and seeing it grow physically uh, is some kind of like trick on my mind and it keeps me more motivated and more focused on my goals. And that is probably just a bunch of psychobabble that is not really a thing. But I tell myself that because I really like seeing things tangibly. Um, I like counting the money on video. I like, you know, um, narrating it so you can follow along in my journey. Uh, so I don't think that I would end up buying uh, the stand-in or the fake bills. But I do see where that is super handy and a great idea. Um, so for anybody who does use that, um, I think, well... Overall, I just think you should use whatever works for you. Um, so, yeah. But anyways, I, I don't think I was aware of that. I don't remember seeing that. But, um, yeah, it's definitely another option. And, you know, when we're doing videos here on YouTube and trying to um, translate our our physical budgets, household, personal, um, into videos so they make sense and so there's a progression and, you know, something to follow along you know, I guess you guys are probably tuned in here not only to see just one video, but maybe to see the progression of where we're going with our goals. I think that that's all part of it. So anyway, but whatever works, whatever makes that storytelling the easiest, I am all for it. But anyways, I am babbling and it's because my thoughts aren't organized. Uh, I'm on tons of medicine, tons of medicine trying to kick this. But um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that all this made sense to you. I just wanted you to be aware that I was adding that new account or that new fund and what the purpose of it was going to be. Um, so we did get that refund check and I'm immediately putting that aside. So we aren't, um, so we're prepared when it comes to you. So yeah. Paying taxes, so much fun. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you haven't already subscribed, I would love if you stuck around and did so. And if you do enjoy this kind of video, um, please consider giving it a thumbs up just so I know. I, I think thumbs up serve a really great purpose of letting me know which are your preferred videos. So um, thanks again. I hope you're all doing well. And of course, as always, I hope I see you guys in my next video. Take care.